doing this video here real late at night because I haven't had much time in the day, you know, I've been working in the shop and uh, there's a lot of distractions during the daytime, traffic's really loud and there's a lot of trains. <coughs> so hopefully this will provide a little bit more peace so that uh, I can hope to present this, you know, as clear as possible. First of all, I'd like to say, uh, if you haven't been watching basically the videos one after another as I've done them, it's kind of hard to keep up. Each video builds upon the last. I know I said this before, but you really have to take this seriously if you're really trying to understand the fullness here of what's happening and how it's even happening and and then to understand when you see this video to kind of know how we've gotten this far to realize what I'm about to show you how important and amazing it really is this will be the miracle that I was talking about in the previous video in so many different ways now once again it is a miracle to me and I just want you to see it and understand that this will provide precision is not even the word for it but precise support from the Bible not only the Bible but the words of Jesus Christ as we've already done so far with what we've talked about with Zechariah 5 Revelation 12, all about Israel, this remnant going to the moon. Unbelievable. And then you know how it's connected into the drawings that I've done as a very young man. And how all these symbols themselves have now told a story that has been found within the Bible. And I'm about to show you the one million, billion, trillion percent proof of that even in the very specific ways that I've talked about it with this number 44 and more exclusively the lost 10 tribes of Israel and their leader Ephraim even in perspective of the field where we talked about that movie with the field of dreams and as you know that corn is really wheat and then right here on the back of the Iraqi dinar what do you see there? The gathering of the wheat. But I'd like you to notice the sickle right beside it. As you know, the sickle is associated with the Grim Reaper, but it's now associated with that biblical scripture that describes these angels that are used for the reaping. And this is where we even get the symbol of these Grim Reaper-like figures from. But nonetheless, We're going to see that proof of these specifics. It's important because if there is any of you out there that are sincere, this is your, this video is for you. It's to show you that everything that you've gone through me with, every video that you have listened to me do my best to overcome my emotion, my own awe, my own wonderment of what's even happening and to try to express this to you and share it with you. I know it's been tough to hear me do video after video all the time and to listen to certain ways that I convey this as I go through different emotional realities in my journey of, of understanding this and bearing this. It's not a burden. But nonetheless, I've had to go through a lot to share this with everyone. <laughs> and uh, there's no problem. I, I take more. I take more to do it. No problem. This video is for you. Okay, so let's begin. We basically looked up in the thesaurus here, Saturn. And as you know, unbelievably, it showed us the unchaste woman. Okay, which is perfectly connected with Israel. Gave us this understanding with high living, all connected from Saturn to Saturnalian. 
Now, all of these other words up here completely fulfill with our commercial Babylon and then our ecclesiastical Babylon Ishtar type presence. Okay, 100% unbelievable. Now, what I was trying to show you guys in the way of the miracle, you were beginning to see in the other video, but I didn't get to really fulfill it. I'm going to try to do that quickly here. Now, the next word that we had come to, uh, or the next portion of the Saturnalia that we had come to in the thesaurus had brought us um, to turmoil. And as we see here, what we've already shown you, and it's basically in the header, the heading with disorder, all right? And then we know that these of the new world order, of this order, these secret orders are all about chaos, disorder to achieve their supposed golden age, right? Their selfish gain. Well, if we are realizing that it's going to result in chaos for them. Like in that poem that I wrote, that line that says, Confusion will increase for all who have signed delusions lease. Okay. These people, these mystery religions, are the ones that have truly signed illusions lease. But that poem is correct in its assessment that it's just a lease, that it's not a permanence. That we know that the Father, Jesus, and the seers, they all prophesize. They prophesize in such a way that they see Israel finally being restored in the end of all of this that all of Israel that repents and you will begin to understand how important it is at least to the eternal son of God Jesus Christ in bringing these lost sheep this lost house of Israel back into the fold and you'll see it you'll see it show up all right now what was amazing all this brought us from Babel. We're now talking about ecclesiastical Babylon, right? Is that not what I've you know, tried to share with you guys? That Israel, the ten horns. You hear about this mystery and revelation about the ten horns. The ten horns are the lost ten tribes of Israel. In Deuteronomy 33, Ephraim and Manasseh are described as having the horns like unicorns. And then we've showed that on the dinar in perspective to everything else. So in Revelation, when it talks about these ten horns that are with the dragon, they're associated with these ten kings that will receive power. But the Bible says it's only for a short while, for just about an hour. Now, that's necessarily a spiritual term that's going to break down into our more our mortal understanding of time but nonetheless the ten horns are these lost ten tribes of israel it even describes it says that they bring the fire revelation 17 verse 17 against their own kingdom and they're doing it by inspiration of their god we know that that's inky to bring him in that's the sacrifice Isaiah chapter 34 okay so these ecclesiastical ecclesiastical means spiritual we know that the ecclesiastical Babylon Babylon is double it is destroying commercial Babylon but yet taking its resources its luxuries with it to the moon and then leaving us all here to suffer and die in this tribulation imposed on us by them so it couldn't be any more perfect to see Babel perfectly paired with this Saturnalia that was associated with that unchaste woman all right now I've said this a little bit before in the other video but I'm telling you just hold out for what I'm about to show you now we said fair which is incredible teams up with the uh, the daughters of men that were chosen by the fallen sons of God, all they thought were fair. Why is that important? Because I told you it's associated with that royal bloodline that the remnant think they are.
this remnant, these blue bloods, this bloodline, think that they're a part of this remnant. It's a special select that we see in Rev 12 that's going to be taken up to this moon situation, which is completely contrary to what Jesus Christ says, that there's neither Jew or Gentile, basically in his eyes, that all are of the kingdom of God, whether they yet realize this or not, but some yet have been influenced and have almost been adopted in by the father of this adulterous wife that is associated with Israel, because for Israel to be an adulterous wife, for her to be unchaste, she has had to take unto herself another, okay? Because we know that she was originally to be the virgin, and now she's unchaste, she's become the whore or the harlot, which associates her with Ishtar. This is how Israel becomes associated with Ishtar. And now you see she is figuratively carrying the bastard child, where we know in Zach 5 it describes them being lifted the wings of a stork to the land of Shinar, that moon base. So being that we see fair there, wow, it's incredible because it perfectly fulfills exactly how the Spirit has inspired me to reveal all this to you. We see confusion. Babylon literally means confusion. And we see that these fair ones were confused when they decided to come unto these sons of God, these fallen ones, and produce these children known as the Nephilim, which has now become the Elites, which is associated with the descendancy of this remnant that believe themselves to be lifted to the land of Shinar. Worse confounded, well, that's going to fulfill a first portion of this miracle where Jesus Christ is literally going to say the exact same thing right out of the Hebrew Bible in the book of Luke, chapter 11, in the exact same context to everything that you see right here. I mean, exactly. And that's a miracle. And I don't know. I don't know other than, I don't know how to get anybody to begin to start being real about this and to start seeing that I'm what's provided as a seer to see through all this in this time of this great deception, of this great falling away, when hundreds of thousands of these people are trying to teach you guys wrong and have been teaching you guys wrong, and they're using the very same wrong teachings to continually to teach you wrong, to pull away from Jesus and believe in Him as something else than the Son of God, to believe in Him as something else than the life that he lived and to mix the serpent doctrine with him and to mix this doctrine that he's saying that we are gods. He's not saying that. Watch the video series that I did. Ye are gods, question mark, and you'll understand. And you'll understand what it's all about. We know what being godlike really is. Mercy, forgiveness, brotherhood, not just to your select fraternity to everyone because in eternity we all belong if Christ is already forgiven eternally he says he's not going to lose a single one that he will bring all to righteous judgment as we know that paradise is not paradise without forgiveness you can't be a paradise can't be a paradise if you're harboring resentment or if you're a racist or if you're selective only within your fraternal affiliations. Okay, all of that fades away. All of that's the doctrines of men. It's not the doctrines of the spirit. Okay, it's a part of the divide and conquer in this world. It has separated you from the reality of your brothers and have joined you with the reality of others only by the written word, by doctrine. That's not right. The spirit supersedes all that, all notions of race and color. You know, think about that. Why not see that as truly beautiful for what it really is? It really is. Are, are not all things evolving? If some of you people believe in racist pride doctrines, do you not realize that all peoples eventually meet their perfection in eternity as long as they travel the road of progress? If any of you seek to stop their journey short by your own hand, 
you're becoming the judge and jury in a court of law that you have no right. You have no right. You, there's, there's no way you can ordain death for someone that the Father has already given the gift of life freely. There's no way. You don't have that power. You don't have that power. When it speaks about the saints judging the fallen in these days ahead, in this age ahead here, it's not for death. It's not for death. We judge them with mercy, compassion, and love. Jesus Christ has commanded us to forgive and to even love those who have made themselves our enemies. That's the spirit in which we judge. Think about it. So, most admired, that's exactly who Zechariah eleven seventeen says is leaving, right? The idol shepherds, idol, most admired, American idol, think about idols themselves. Is not America basically the leader, okay? Ephraim, Ephraim is the founder of the 13 colonies of this new world, which has now been used to bring about the new world order. Ephraim is the 13th tribe of Israel who is trying to break the seal to bring about the 13th judge of Israel, Dan, which has fallen. But we know that Dan will re legion again. And that we see that these locusts, they come out hot and heavy. But as we see towards the end, they realize and they change. <laughs> it's all within prophecy. Even in the perspective that Jesus Christ speaks about it it's incredible and it even fulfills a verse in the bible that says i will command the serpent and he will bite them <sighs> unreal i've never understood that that verse until i understand now what jesus is talking about in john 10 and what he's even talking about in luke 11. it's incredible it's incredible so the most admired is the fulfillment of zechariah 11 who these ones who are planning on leaving the flock those are the idle shepherds. Everybody that you see is associated in the entertainment industry with blocking the, their right eye, exposing the left eye. You know that the great seal of the United States is what? It's that eye. Okay? It's that eye. And then these are the ones that Zach eleven seventeen describes as having that darkened right eye. They're going to leave the flock. Where do we say they're leaving to? We said that they're leaving, they're going to Shinar. If they're going to bring upon a destruction on this world, if they're going to bring about tribulation, they need to destroy a lot of people. They need to limit assets, resources, food, supplies, okay? Well, obviously, people are going to get pretty hectic around here, right? Well, they are running off and fleeing, and then that's the fulfillment of Rev 12 as it compares with Zach 5 that tells you the fullness of it. But it's evilness and wickedness that's going there. It's these idle shepherds that out of pride and vanity and, and just oh, wicked pleasures and desires, these people have tricked themselves into believing that they're doing the right thing. It's incredible. It's incredible. So the most admired, it's everything. And then you know what happened here. It began to fulfill the warning that Hosea gave them about the bull. It's going to cast them off. We know that pretty white china, everything with fair. I mean, it's incredible. Broil, agitation. It just doesn't get any more intense. Raise your vibration creates an agitation, a distortion that breaks the vessel. It's all there. Fat in the fire, Isaiah 34. Okay? Hell or bedlam? Devil to pay? It's incredible. The wages of sin or death. Sin, Babylonian moon god, associated with this refuge for them to bring this presence, the material form, the body that Inky is to be housed in to this moon. It's this whole thing is a consistent fractal that somehow somehow I've been allowed to see and offer it freely to you to you what are you going to do with it pay attention here to worse confounded 
and remember. Verse 11. Interesting. And from 11 through, we come all the way up to verse 33. Pretty interesting, huh, for you guys that are, like, some of you guys are so into numbers. Well, here's the proof of your numbers. All this is speaking about you. Verse 33 is talking about the 33, okay, these mystery societies that have got all this doctrine bound up in their year God's theory. And what I told you in reality is really only truly all about bringing one individual as a God this fallen one into a material form. We know that this was described here. Uh, we've already shown that this is a fulfillment of other verses in so many ways, and it even fulfills right on down to Zach eleven seventeen, describing the understanding about that dark and die, and that these ones that have that dark and die are full of evil, full of evil. And the fulfillment of this candle being put in a secret place, that secret place you're going to see fulfilled in parable is a field, as I told you. It's their field of dreams, just like in the Kevin Costner movie. Corn is wheat. That field corn is really the wheat corn, which fulfills it with the parable of the wheat and the tares. The division of the wheat and the tares, I've showed you that the tares believe themselves to be the wheat. But it's really the tears, the terror that is going to the moon. And Jesus is telling you the same thing. Good old number 33. They're doing that work. This is the fulfillment of the mystery religions who are all about the sacred fulfillment, feminine, bringing, okay, this remnant to the moon. All right. Fulfillment of Rev 12. It's what Jesus is telling you. Okay. Under a bushel is that ephab basket of Zechariah 5. All right. Now it's just important to see how all of that fulfilled from starting at verse 11 to verse 33. And then everything in between is will fulfill in parable form all the specifics that I've already fulfilled in all the other videos that tell you that Ephraim is that strong man armed. Okay. I'm going to get to the miracle part. There's a diagram of Zechariah 11:17, the two hemispheres of the brain. You want to understand about this? Watch why the Illuminati use the left eye on my playlist. It says that the sword is upon their arm, the sword of judgment, which is this flying roll. All right? All right, you guys should know that that it reveals that a stronger is going to come upon them and spoil them and take their goods. That's that warning that we saw fulfilled in the thesaurus. In the thesaurus, right? Worst confounded, bull in a china shop, okay? Bedlam broke loose. Well, who are they trying to, to break loose? We already know all this, to, to loose the seal, everything associated with the polyon and the locust, but I tell you, what goes around comes around, does it not? Um, so, um, look how verse 11 starts here. And I'm, I'm speaking to people that I think that have seen the previous videos. That's why I'm not going into the greatness of detail. I'm just kind of topically refreshing you so you can kind of put all this together in a summary. If a son shall ask, of, if a son shall ask bread any of you that is a father will he give him a stone <laughs> or if he ask a fish will he for a fish give him a serpent Jesus is putting this into the perspective of everything that we've talked about remember we revealed that the manna that Moses was offering was that monatomic gold aka the philosopher's stone the elixir of life as we know it can be transmutated alchemically to powder form that was the manna that was cited as looking like the hoarfrost of heaven and we know that it was coming from the temple Hathor which is situated 
presently today at a plateau at Mount Sarabit, aka Horheb Sinai, an Egyptian temple, basically refinery, if you will, that they found actually this manna powdered substance as it was described by the Israelites calling it manna, which literally means, what is it? Manna means, what is it? So in the video series that I did about ye are gods and a few other video series, we show all the intrinsic, precise, biblical fulfillment of scripture that reveals that this bread was that stone, the philosopher's stone taken out of the earth. We even showed it in the Sumerian translations associated with this uh, people of great people of Karanugi, that the serpent shall eat the dust of the earth all the days of his life. That dust is that powdered manna, that small, round, white thing, as small as the hoarfrost of heaven. This is what Jesus is talking about when he says, if you want true bread, he says, I'm the true bread. I'm the real bread that came down from heaven. Moses gave your fathers not that true bread that came from heaven. Any that ate of that bread are dead. That's exactly what he says. And he's talking about it in a fuller form here. What's important is that he almost summarizes from verse 11 to verse 33, everything that I've revealed to you in a thousand plus videos in hardcore precise, exhaustive manner. I've, I've given everything to reveal unto you guys what is really real and true that Jesus is revealing through his true and supreme of faith. And evidently, there's just a lot of people that are lacking faith. I mean, obviously, we're going through the period of the great falling away. It makes perfect sense that we got people on YouTube calling themselves Christians ready to outright kill people and attack and follow them like a pack of wolves. And then at the same time, um, subversively preaching some sort of serpent doctrine all bound up in this ye are God's mess. Well, we're trying to warn them. We're trying to help them. We're trying to help them. So, and then, wow, I'm going to have to do a whole separate video on verse 24 to 26 because, oh my gosh, it's just amazing. Everything about Israel leaving everything in perspective of a higher reflection of what that means, even beyond Israel, it's just, oh my gosh. I told you that it's associated with the rising of the seven chakras, the illuminated, those that have rose that Kundalini spirit associated with these seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Just wait for that video. All right. Okay. Verse 27, describing that woman. It's incredible here. And I talked about this a little bit before, but... I'm telling you to absorb all this in the perspective of how we've gone through this. You've got to see it. How Jesus is trying to reveal this. And that so many people have not been able to understand. He says, though you have eyes, you don't see. Though you have ears, you don't hear. Your ears have become dull of hearing. Please don't let that happen to you now. And 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 let the the backdrop of these antagonists and their hatred. Let all of that illuminate what this truth is against their darkness. Let the strong contrast of their sordid actions that they practice in the comments page and all the scandalous videos that they have put out against me and just mocking and just having a good old time. Let all that contrast this truth, the enormity of this truth that I'm bringing you here as the real light that it is. And that you can see that these people are just literally immersed in the shadow and, they, and they're manifesting it. And I, I just, I don't, I, I love them still. I, and I hope that you all love them still. I hope that they still find love for me. I, I, don't, I don't know how to put it. Verse 27 basically sums up 
the sacred feminine association, everything with a fulfillment of who's trying to bring these, uh, or who's trying to bring the remnant of the sacred feminine, the union of the sons of God with the daughter. Taken to that secret place that's Rev 12, that's the moon. Oh, is that not that woman? Is that not the woman that you see in Zechariah? Uh, Zechariah 5, is that not the woman that you see in Zach 12? Is that not the, the woman that we're talking about? Is Israel not considered the woman? Is Ezekiel 19 not describing where, where this woman Ishtar began to initially start corrupting those first young lions? Ezekiel chapter 19, the original sons of God before they had fallen. And then once these young lions had fallen, now they were being taught to destroy men. Ezekiel chapter 19, Israel is that mother, that lioness that had corrupted the original sons of God with the sacred feminine doctrine. And then we see in an incredible spiritual miracle, Jesus Christ is literally saying, you know, yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. You know, verse 27, the woman is trying to talk about the womb and the paps, the teats being blessed, all of this stuff. And he's saying, nah, it's not that. It's anybody from anywhere from any race, from any nation, from any house, from any religion, from any creed, from any planet, from any universe, anybody that can just simply hear the word of God and keep it with the simplicity and the loving heart, faith and trust of a child. As I said, children don't study etymology. Children don't study sacred geometry. They don't need that. They can understand that the parent is good and they can understand the child and parent relationship from the beginning simply because the parent provides. Naturally, the child follows after. Realize who is truly providing the full fruits of the truth of the spirit and gonna bring you through each and every infinite variable step along the way to become perfect. Perfection means that you have mastered all the variables. <laughs> Some of you people haven't even mastered some of the first few concepts of the most relative insignificance of this world. And you're running around here ready to kill people because they're teaching you that you're in your first stages of expansion, not the manifestation of perfection think about it so if you can put all that into perspective and you've been going through all of these videos with me then you know how incredible and how dynamic and how important this it is and why so many people really do fight me you know so many people are upset on YouTube because literally just a few years worth of videos that I've presented and have offered freely are not only challenging but literally overturning hundreds of thousands of people's YouTube videos about the Bible and Jesus literally just completely overturns them and, and shows them as empty, empty of real understanding, wisdom and truth. And it's not me that does it. It's the spirit of truth that I have supreme faith in. Um, that's the miracle or that's the beginning here. The miracle actually it goes, it gets, incredibly more deeper actually it's just the beginning here but being worse confounded right as we saw that in the thesaurus it's all right there from verse 26 and the last state of that man is worse than the first i mean do you have a good memory do you have a good memory of the entire all the videos and at least just in this series that i have presented on this tears fractal thing here <sighs> worse confounded and it's those that are most admired right that's the idol shepherds these are the people that believe them to be that special remnant that special select yeah but i told you not all of them are being dealt with honestly as we know that ephraim is hired lovers per what hosea says but we also know that 
that Ephraim plans on duping many of these people. Okay, many of these people um, that want to be raptured up, that are a part of this psyops, that's what they're talking about, the moon. Okay, with what Rev 12 talks about, just like 777 AEJ talked about in her video, where if you view her video on Rev 12 with my video on Rev 12, it will show you that uh, she obviously don't understand what Zachariah 5 says and all the other things, or maybe she does. I think she does. But nonetheless, I don't judge her. If she's really all about that, then she needs to just come out and tell her subscribers that that's what she's about. And then let the, let the subs realize then and let them realize what 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 we're offering here. And I think that a lot of people would say, oh, that's she's not anything that I thought she was. You know, here all this time, I thought that she was about Jesus Christ. When I realized in reality, she's about Israel. She's about herself. She's about Israel. Um, so all that. There's the worst confounded in every perfect bit. The fair ones, these ones that believe themselves to be the remnant, associated with the sacred feminine, it's all wrapped up, even with the symbolism of Baphomet, right? Even with the symbolism of Baphomet. Unreal. Okay. Now, I, I mean, we talked about this a little bit more, and we're going to talk about it more again. I'm still preparing you to understand this stuff that we talked about in the Peculiar Brothers series. All of this is so highly relative, it's just unreal. All right, now, this will be the new information. Um, and I've got something to show you guys out of this, this thesaurus again, which is going to fulfill the miracle even further about their refuge. Um, it's just... Amazing, there's Zion, and it's going to fulfill it again with all the warnings of danger at that place that they're going to, just like it shows in my drawings. Just like it shows in my drawings, danger for them. We know that it describes that their water is going to be dried up. That's what Zechariah 11:17 says for these idle shepherds. Woe to the idle shepherds that leaveth the flock. It describes that their arm shall be clean, dried up. Well, where's their arm? Hosea tells you it's their high arm. It's that high arm of avian. That's the moon for the birds of heaven, is it not? These very same birds that are sighted in Revelation being called down to this great supper of that great God. That's the God of this earth. And then that would be that sacrifice, the blood sacrifice of Isaiah 34, where you see those birds those symbolized birds inherit that land of Babylon, which now is this land of where we are in the United States. It's the land of the entirety of the world. It's their golden age. It's what they believe they're going to inherit the earth. Well, Jesus Christ tells you that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. And then here these people are in flesh and blood thinking they're going to inherit the kingdom and teach you that. It's Israel that believes they're going to inherit the kingdom in flesh and blood. That's why they believe they need to go through a transmutation, a genetic dissimulation, so that they can exist materially for a great period of time. All bound up in their misunderstanding of the histories of the ancient sons of God who I told you had the genetic complement to exist mortally for a great period of time but once they rebelled we know that that prerogative that divinity prerogative was taken from them and then enoch cites them only living for about 500 years but that's not average men that's a whole separate type of being that was sent to this world that is not mankind but yet was made like mankind so that it could exist within the same realm and then teach mankind. We know that these sons of God did fall to the physical lusts that were tempted by the sacred feminine. Read that in Ezekiel chapter 19. Okay, read it in Genesis 6. Genesis 6, Ezekiel 19, complement each other. All right, now we're going to talk about the parable of the wheat and the tares. This is chapter 13. It's incredible because we're seeing the numerics of every bit of this biblical scripture is fulfilling with the number 33, even 333, which we'll see in perspective. 
um, of their year, God's doctrine, proving it is false directly from the Bible. Ephraim is the 13th tribe. So as we've already revealed, Ephraim is the leader of the 10 tribes. In other words, the 10 horns, the 10 horns of the dragon, okay? The 10 tribes, the 10 nations, the 10 false nation witnesses of this world that are now bearing the olive branch insignia, a.k.a. Right, great wings of an eagle, and then we see right here the olive branch. Um, uh, the 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 ten horns are the ten uh, false nation witnesses of this world. They're the ones that are causing all the judgment that you see cited in Revelation 11. They're the ones that bring, plan on bringing this fire down from the sky. It's describing it as coming down out of their mouths. Or not down out of their mouths, but out of their mouths. We know that this symbolism is in relationship to the flying roll, which is considered a written word, either that of man or God. And that would be Zechariah 5, chapter 5 or 4. I'm not sure as it describes that roll. Well, then the roll comes, which is the destruction, and then we see in Zach 5 that Israel speedily flees away, being lifted up. And then they're lifted up with that wickedness. They're even sealed in lead. Well, that would be the Led Zeppelin from that popular band, Led Zeppelin, with their song, Stairway to Heaven. That Led Zeppelin is that hot air balloon. And we know that Satan is chief of the powers of the ways of the air. We know that his air is all coming from hell, this hot fire. And then now we see the warning is even fulfilled with the Led Zeppelin. As we know that great Zeppelin that did catch on fire and come tumbling back down. So Zach 5 describing that thing that would lift them up being sealed in lead now is associated with a lead zeppelin. It's all associated with the very same things that we saw in that one song, Bye Bye Miss American Pie, where it talked about the birds flying off with a fallout shelter. A fallout shelter is made from lead. Okay. If, if you haven't been watching my videos, please watch them. Please watch them to see what everybody is trying to stop you from understanding. And understand that I can help you see. I can help you see. Now what we're going to do is we're not going to read the parables themselves at this point. Because I'm going to do an entire video series on it if we have time. What I'm going to do for you is something very special. I'm going to read the study notes. And... I want you to realize that I've got a lot of study notes to read. And these study notes are going to show you things that many people would rather you not see and that they currently are seeing very wrong. Especially this parable, the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. Three measures of meal. Remember this association we talked about with the trident. Remember the association with LSD. It goes broader. But then look at the numbers. Verse 33. All right, we're talking about the sacred feminine. All right. And then now it's paired with the study number three beside it. Very interesting. That's their Gospel of Thomas. Three, three, three. You even see this 333 shown to you in symbol in that movie, Night of the Comet. It's that address of that building over the heads of Regina and Ankh Goldman. And then we know that Regina, the Regina, is that sacred feminine symbolism for Ishtar, who is regening, restocking the world with the fallen race. All right. All of this is going to show you that so many people are blind. And they don't understand what Jesus is speaking about. And they're trying to teach you wrong. If you just do your best to have some patience and, and look through my videos, you'll see. You will see. Okay, first let's open it up right here. Listen very close. This is going to be a treat of understanding here. The parable reasoning for the breakdown is going to start here with this verse starting at verse 24. 
maybe I should read this. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said, The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, least while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Notice that in the parable, Jesus is saying, No, not at this time. And then that fulfills what they're thinking is wrong. They're saying that they are going to be gathered up at this time. And then that will fulfill what Jesus is telling to Peter, where he says, Satan first seeks to sift the wheat. That's the one. He's the one that's going to do it to even damage the true wheat, the true believer, the true church. But Jesus is saying, no, that's not the way that he does it. But he said, nay, at least while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers. Now we know that that's taking place while they're on the moon. I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Incredible. Now the wheat can now be the tares on the moon that have repented. That's right. And you see Jesus is going to fulfill that much later, talking about this treasure that was hid in a field. Where's that treasure going to be that was hid in a field? It's going to be that field of dreams, Shinar, the field of Sharon, the field of Shinar. It's the moon. Everything I'm telling you is absolutely true. And Jesus is telling you that it's true. Please understand. Please understand. All right, so you see that parable. Okay, read it yourself. Now listen closely to the interpretation which is given all of the biblical support and foundation. I cannot get all the words in there that you'll be able to see perfectly. Back the camera up, and then you're going to have to do your best to, uh, to read as I read it, starting here. This parable, verses 24 through 30, is also interpreted by our Lord. Let me check the time to see where I'm at to know when that cutout's going to be. I guess I've already probably missed one. It's going to be at 50 minutes, starting at 40 seconds, I think. Okay, i got a couple of minutes. This parable, verses 24 through 30, is also interpreted by our Lord, verses 36 through 43. Here the good seed is not the word, as in the first parable, verses 19 through 23. Notice he gives dimensional perspectives on the same parable understanding, but rather that which the word has produced. 1 Peter 1, verse 23, the children of the kingdom. Visualize the children of the kingdom. These are providentially sown, i.e. scattered here and there in the field of the world. Verse 38. The world here is both geographical and ethnic. As I did I not tell you that these ones are being lifted to this field of dreams. Being they become the field. They become the dreamers, those that have been truly asleep, those that have been truly blinded. You have to be asleep to dream. Okay. And then you're in darkness. They're going to the dark side of the moon. All right. It's an ethnic situation, okay? We're talking about an ethnicity. We're talking about a race pride here, okay? We're talking about a special select that believes themselves to have this special descendancy of genetics. But we realize the special descendancy of genetics is coming from the fallen ones. And they've been tricked into believing it's the way to, for them to achieve their perfection. You can't achieve perfection from someone that's already fallen. Think about that. So, 
the world, now you'll see this fully formed later as I was speaking here. The world here is both geographical and ethnic. So this world is those that leave. It's these worldly people that leave the world that they destroy to go to another world, which will fulfill the parable of the prodigal son, which leaves his, his first place and goes to a foreign land. That foreign land would be Shinar. So the world here is both geographical and ethnic, the earth world and also the world of men. Where's this world of men? The world of men, okay? We're talking about the kingdoms of men. We're talking about the kings of the earth. So if it's the world of men, we know that the kings of the earth are escaping the judgment that they're bringing to this world. Revelation 17, 17 says they're going to bring this destruction on their own world. Well, Shinar is the refuge for them. They're going there. The weed of God at once becomes the scene of Satan's activity. Where children of the kingdom are gathered there among the wheat. Satan sows children of the wicked one who profess to be children of the kingdom. Now, this is happening here before they go. This has been happening throughout this age. This has been happening throughout all of the ages since Eden itself, that these tares have been sown in amongst the real children. But we know that like any garden, first the weeds start out few, but left, you know, left to their own devices, they multiply and eventually take over the whole garden. Well, that's exactly what we see with these tares amongst the wheat now. Even within the truth movement in YouTube, this supposed garden of growing truth is full of nothing but tares trying to choke out those unique flowers of truth like we're trying to offer here right now. Satan sows children of the wicked one who profess to be children of the kingdom and in outward ways are so like the true children that only the angels may in the end be trusted to separate them. Incredible. So great is Satan's power of deception that the tares often really suppose themselves to be the children of the kingdom. Think about how many people are attacking this channel with threats, attacking the subscribers with this incredible rage and hate and malice and mockery and just laughing and having a great old time and yet they think they're the children the true children of god and which they're the true children of god but yet they're denying the true god and they're accepting the leading inspiration of another and i i urge everyone to pray for them pray for them pray for them it's exactly what it's saying. So great is Satan's power of deception that the tares often really suppose themselves to be the children of the kingdom. You're seeing it all over YouTube. You're seeing it all over YouTube. Many other parables and exhortations have this mingled condition in view. Indeed, it characterizes Matthew from chapter 13 to the end. The parable of the wheat and the tares is not a description of the world, but of that which professes to be the kingdom. So the tares are those that are professing themselves to be the kingdom and those that are professing themselves to inherit this kingdom. All of these people that are thinking that they're going to be lifted up and saved from this destruction and this rapture, not the ones that are, are, are doing this unknowingly because they've been guided into false teaching. Okay, but it's the ones that are deliberately doing this, that are deliberately knowing that they are something else and they are seeking to present themselves to you as the children of Jesus. But in reality, they know they're not. And they're trying to sway your attentions from Jesus Christ in the real meaning of his parables, push everybody into this understanding of Rome, which is now being pushed to the Catholic Church, which you will soon see them push. And they're already doing it to Christianity, which it has nothing to do with Christianity. A Christian is somebody who just simply seeks to do the will of God as it was lived by Jesus Christ. That's not what, what they're presenting to you in Catholicism. 
because they're, they're exposing Catholicism. It's their form of Catholicism that they're exposing. <laughs> it's what Jesus is exposing is false Israel. That's who he is exposing. It is false Israel. It is the synagogue of Satan who is bringing about this destruction. And then we see that Catholicism is just a mask of their ecclesiastical spiritual Babylon that they're hiding behind. The ten horns of the dragon are the ten lost tribes of Israel, not in association with the fulfillment of Rome like they present it. But you have to realize that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were under the Roman yoke. And then you get the expression, if you can't beat them, join them. Well, we see that false Israel has joined Rome. It has joined this, uh, this Roman merger of uh, this ancient mysticism with the mysticism of ancient Israel and brought it together as this new thing that is associated with Mystery Babylon. The parable of the wheat and the tares is not a description of the world, but of that which professes to be the kingdom. This is very important. Mere unbelievers are never called children of the devil, but only religious unbelievers are so called. And that's by Jesus Christ. If you're just an unbeliever, if you're an atheist, if... Um, you know, if you're just walking around here and you don't really believe in God, you're not really an atheist, you're not any of these things, you just don't really believe in it. He's not calling you a children of the devil. You're still his child that is yet to receive, that is yet to fulfill the expansion of your mind to understand the potential of the aesthetic quality of the spirit logic as it can free the fetters of your material weights and lift you above the, the limited self that we are in our own materiality. Think about it. So Jesus is saying that it's the religious. Religious means spiritual. It means ecclesiastical. It is these children that have taken unto themselves the spirit doctrine of the serpent that you see is all bound up in the symbol of the caduceus, which is the serpent winding up the pole, which symbolizes the God of this earth, which symbolizes exactly what his doctrine is now doing in completely deceiving so many people in this world and will continue to do because they're being tempted by what vanity that there's some sort of God. <laughs> Incredible. All right. I urge you guys to read that again, to get this study Bible and to understand and to ponder everything that I said very deeply and to realize we're going to come to a greater fulfillment of this field this fulfills what we said here with the tares. It fulfills with the exposure of this person called Ambrose A. Belair, who is associated with another person. I make war with a beast, who is then associated with another person. Mig Fox Bat, who is then associated with another person, another person, another person. All these people are interconnected. And then they will fight each other, and then they will accuse each other to make you think that they're not connected. And then as I do videos, then if you notice, they actually change their tactics and begin to start doing things differently, just like Bill of Occult Science 101 has done. Before, he used to do literally, seemed like hundreds of videos on this Queenie person, just bag, 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 rag, 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 over and over and over. Well, that was a psyops. It was to expose, if, if you didn't like Bill, well, then the opposite side of the coin was Queenie. Well, Bill and Queenie are the same thing. They're presenting the same information. You don't realize that you think they're not, but they are. It's the same thing. Anyway. Incredible. Incredible. I'm going to summarize this video up here with this portion of the reading, which will further fulfill the miracle for me. I'm not going to read the portion that is going to fulfill the Levin mystery at verse 33. Study note number three, incredible. But we've got a whole bunch to talk about it and all the accompanying scriptures that would support and back up the full meaning that nobody can deny. The only thing they're gonna try to do is deny you from watching my vids. They're gonna try to deny you from finding my channel and they're gonna ramp up their attacks even more. As you should know, I have just recently started blocking these people and, uh, 
it's going to continue. I have achieved what I needed to do. Um, now all of these people know who I am. All of these idle shepherds know who I am. Their eye is on me. Their dark eye on me. Their left eye on me. That's exactly the way that the Spirit wants it. Because the Spirit is revealing all this to them. This is also a warning for them. To, to tell them that, that they are going to suffer the repercussions of their own actions. Plain and simple. So... We're still looking at the breakdowns of the parables. I'm going to start reading here at portion number two. This is where it will get absolutely incredible. And I'm going to stop the video after I read this. This is going to fulfill. preparing the place for the remnant to come to and then it's going to be called a field and as you see it's going to be something that jesus christ has already given his blood for and you know that israel is the one who who sacrificed him upon that cross and as i told you that jesus obliged and in a sense has given life even his life for the entirety of this world in so many ways. As I've said before, Jesus Christ did not come to die for us. He came to live. Jesus has never died. Jesus is not flesh. Jesus is eternal spirit. The life that he gave is the life that he lived. That's the life that he gave to this world. Understand it. The interpretation of the parable of the treasure. This is going to be starting off here at basically 36. Okay, and then reading through. Or, yeah, I think it starts at 30, 36 and then runs through all the way to verse 44. And then goes into verse the understanding of verse 44. Basically, it's an expansion of the parable in multiple ways. Just have to let it explain itself here. The interpretation of the parable of the treasure. I'm trying to make sure. Okay, my fault. My fault. It does not start at 36. Even though it is an expansion here. What I'm going to read explains just simply verse 44. What did I tell you? We're talking about United States at its 44th presidency. Now as a mirror of Israel dispersed at its 44th king, the monatomic gold. It's now, um, it disappears in a brilliant flash of light. Monatomic gold, right? 44% of the monatomic gold is said to disappear to the field of Sharon, which is an alternate dimension. Well, this field of Sharon in our physical terms is the field of Shinar. Shinar, Sharon, same thing. So the monatomic gold, 44% of it in an actual lab. When the gold substance is struck with a high heat, are they not bringing fire from the sky? And then we see when this fire comes from the sky that then they're lifted up. Zechariah describes that first the roll comes, we know that that's that judgment. And then it describes them being lifted up. It's the same thing in a lab. When the gold is hit with a high arc, electrical current, high heat, okay? It's coming from above it, right? It's coming from the moon. The 44% of that gold disappears, okay? 56% of the material is left behind. 44% of that material goes somewhere into the field of Sharon. That's them disappearing. That's the fulfillment of Zechariah eleven seventeen, where it says the idle shepherds shall flee the flock. Where are they going to flee to? They're fleeing to the moon. Verse 44. Incredible. Incredible. Everything I've revealed, everything I've told you, is about to manifest in one single verse. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure 
hidden in a field. Hidden in a field? What did Jesus Christ talk about in um, Luke where he describes that candle, right? Same thing he's talking about, okay? No man when he lighteth a candle putteth it in a secret place. The secret place is the same hidden place that we see he's talking about here for this particular treasure that he's highly interested in. Remember, he's talking about lost sheep. What does Jesus Christ tell his disciples to go unto? He says, go unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He doesn't say go unto the lost sheep of Rome. Okay, if you're a disciple, you were to be bringing the truth to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Exactly as what we do here on this channel, right? And then they are diverting your attention, not, not allowing you to realize that Rome and Israel have merged a long time ago. A long time ago in the representation of the Sadducees with the Pharisees. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. Where's that treasure hid, hid in a field? Zechariah 5 will tell you. Rev 12 will tell you. One of the ones will tell you. It'll tell you that that field is the field of dreams, just like it's being spoken about in that movie, Kevin Costner, build it and they will come. Go watch my breakdown of that movie and you will see the artistic rendering of the jacket cover. The poster billboard for that movie has all the symbolisms of the sacred feminine, the evergreen tree for Ishtar and the moon itself. Even the twisted crossed legs of Kevin Costner symbolizing the caduceus, the winding DNA. Incredible. Incredible. And then the four plus the four together is the eight. And if you understand Revelation as it describes the Antichrist, this eight comes into play. Okay. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. The which, when a man hath found, he hideth. And for joy thereof, goeth and selleth all that he hath and and buyeth that field now listen closely because you're going to get the interpretation of this singular line which is going to fulfill the miracle of what i've given you in over a thousand plus videos and culminated everything i've told you is going to fulfill video is about to close out here friends the interpretation of the parable of the treasure which makes the buyer of the field to be a sinner who is seeking Christ has no warrant in the parable itself the first line is telling you that the that the common interpretation of this parable does not team up with scripture people are interpreting this wrong the interpretation of the parable of the treasure which makes the buyer of the field to be a sinner who is seeking Christ has no warrant in the parable itself. The field is defined, verse 38, to be the world. The seeking sinner does not buy, but forsakes the world to win Christ. Furthermore, the sinner has nothing to sell, nor is Christ for sale, nor is Christ hidden in a field? Now that would fulfill what Luke 11 is telling you. This candle that they're bringing, that we saw in Zechariah fulfilled, I think it was in Zechariah 3, which is talking about the God of this world, talking about the candle that they are hiding somewhere. Remember Jesus Christ, the scriptures cite, I think it's the words of Jesus Christ, where he says that if they say that I'm in the secret place, believe it not, Israel. Are you believing that he's in this secret place when literally he's telling you he's not? And then he's telling you in this parable that he's not, that that's not the logical thing to do. And then we see that it it's the very same thing. It's the very same fulfillment. It says, nor is he hidden in a field. Nor having found Christ, does the sinner hide him again? And then, of course, the, the uh, scriptural verses. 
I'm sorry I'm jumping around here and it's at the most crucial portion of it too so uh, at every point the interpretation breaks down so everything from here and to breaks down the common understanding of the parable and reveals it as not true okay what we see here is the correct interpretation our lord is the buyer at the awful cost of his blood first peter 1 verse 18 in israel especially ephraim you hear this Jeremiah verses 31, I mean, Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 5 through 12, verses 18 through 20. Especially Ephraim, the lost tribes hidden in the field. Land in connection with the prodigal son. Lost tribes hidden in a field. What is that? The field of dreams. That's the dark side of the moon. That's the field of Shinar. Everything I have had revealed to me and am doing my best to reveal to you. This is the proof. This is the proof that we are right. All of those that are sincere. All of those that have followed after the leading of the spirit of truth as I've done my best to reveal how has it inspired me and already given me this. I am a seer this is why these people attack me share me with the world i can give more i can give much more i'm waiting to give more i'm waiting to reveal more i want to reveal more i'm supposed to reveal more our Lord is the buyer at the awful cost of his blood in Israel, especially Ephraim, the lost tribes hidden in the field, the world. As I said, they are the world. Okay, what does Jesus Christ say? He says, what do you, what do you expect? How can you, ex what do you expect if you're going to, to lose your soul if you're going to try to gain the world at the price of losing your soul, are they not trying to inherit the earth in a, in a material means? Are they not trying to bring this fire from the sky deceptively and sneaking around and attacking everybody? That's all selfish gain. They're going to try to gain the world, but Jesus Christ says in that very act of what you're doing, you're losing your soul. You're losing your soul. It's these the worldly, of the luxuries of the world, the pleasures of this world that truly don't know the spirit, that are seeking to stay in the physical. The lost tribes hidden in the field. That's, that's the moon. Rev 12, Zach 5, fulfillment. The fulfillment of what I've offered you as my vision. The field, the world, is the treasure. Verses that accompany it. Again, as in the separation of the tares and the wheat. It times it up now with the tares and the wheat. I'm telling you the separation, where they're going, the angels are used. Where are the angels going to go? As we see, Jesus has said that these reaping angels, which now are going to be the fulfillment of these sons of God, as you see, Jesus has said that they will judge them. Dan is going to judge them. Jacob has said that Dan is going to judge them. The angels are used. Where they, they're where they being used at? They're being used at this field. The divine merchant buys the field, the world. It's those of the world, the worldly who have destroyed their first and are now going to another place fleeing for the sake of the treasure. Verse 44. Now it times up with Book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 28. Uh, the divine merchant buys the field for the sake of the treasure, beloved for the father's sakes, and yet to be restored and saved. It's yet to be restored and saved. It has not yet. Remember, Jesus Christ says, I shall not lose a single one. The note of joy, verse 44 is also that the prophets in view of Israel's restoration. And that's right. The prophets do see restoration for Israel, all of Israel that repents. We see Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 9, Isaiah chapter 49, verses 13, chapter 50, 
62, verses 1 through 3, chapter 62, verses 4 through 7, chapter 65, verses 18 and 19. See Israel, Genesis chapter 11, verse 10, book of Romans chapter 11, verse 26. The true church, one body, formed by the Holy Spirit. If How can this body separate itself? Jesus says that the kingdom divided is going to fall. They divide their kingdom. Some go up, some go down, right? Some go into the earth, some go up, divided. The true church, one body, formed by the Holy Spirit. As Israel is the hid treasure, so the church is the pearl of great cost. <sighs> Incredible. Incredible. Now, if you would like to read that, go ahead. I'm not going to read any further. It was a little jumbled up. Maybe if I got more time in this video, I should read all this through without citing the verses or without adding my um, input here. This is talking all about verse 44. The interpretation of the parable of the treasure which makes the buyer of the field to be a sinner who is seeking Christ has no warrant in the parable itself. The field is defined to be the world. The seeking sinner does not buy, but forsakes the world to win Christ. Furthermore, the sinner has nothing to sell, nor is Christ for sale, nor is he hidden in a field. Nor having found Christ, does the sinner hide him again. At every point, the interpretation breaks down. Our Lord is the buyer at the awful cost of his blood, and Israel, especially Ephraim, the lost tribes hidden in the field. They are the lost tribes hidden in the field. The tares and wheat, all right, hold on. Our Lord is the buyer at the awful cost of his blood. In Israel, especially Ephraim, the lost tribes hidden in the field, the world is the treasure. Again, as in the separation of tares and wheat, the angels are used. The divine merchant buys the field for the sake of the treasure. Beloved, for our Father's sakes, and yet to be restored and saved. The note of joy is also that of the prophets in view of Israel's restoration. So we see that they are yet to be saved, that they are going to commit this act. But as you know, Jesus Christ said that he is going to shorten the tribulation. And I tell you, we are in for an intense fulfillment. I literally pray for every one of you who is my friend or my foe to come together in one family and realize that we ourselves are not the enemy, that we're dealing with uh, spiritual wickedness in high places that is being influenced by either even more spiritual wickedness. There's much more to say, but until next time. Be well.